great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against thee. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heaven, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of His Covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen takes her place at your right hand in gold of Ophir. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Hear, O daughter, and see. Turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. They are born in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Mary is taken up to heaven. A chorus of angels exults. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant left in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast on the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Today the church celebrates the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven, body, and soul. Although this uh, statement of the church was not officially declared uh, a statement until the 1950s, I think it was 1950 to be exact. This has been a belief that we have held as Catholics since as early as probably the fourth century. They spoke about Mary's dormition and assumption. Many traditions have arisen uh, around this miraculous event and it leads one to say and i've often asked this question of friends uh, in discussion when they speak about the scripture the scripture alone and we can only hold what is taught in the scripture and i ask them if that is the case that we can only profess as christians that which is explicitly spelled out in sacred scripture, then how can we account for the Trinity? For the word Trinity is not specifically found in sacred scripture. 
but yet all Christians hold the Trinity. So there are parts of our tradition, and St. John in his gospel said it best, that Jesus Christ did more and said more things than were recorded. He goes on to say that if they were recorded, they would fill multiple books. So there was in the early church an unspoken, well, excuse me, an unwritten oral tradition. Because if you remember, uh, the New Testament wasn't put together as we have it until probably almost the year 400. So if they didn't have the New Testament as they have today, until the 400s, the 380s, 390s, that they start putting it together. And what did they use? A few, the oral tradition that they had heard. And think about it also. How many people read back then? Was well, really it was at a premium the ability to read. Not everybody read, but they could remember stories. They had very good memories. We sometimes shortchange our ancestors. Oh, they weren't as technologically advanced as we are, but they weren't dumb. They had very good memories. In fact, if we look at some of the great minds of ancient culture, we realize, yeah, those people were visionaries. We feel People such as uh, Elon Musk now. Back then they had Archimedes. They had uh, others out there. Uh, so there are traditions that we still hold. And Mary's assumption is one of those traditions that was passed on orally. Something that people believed. Why? Not because it was fanciful or far-fetched, but because it made a lot of sense. And how so? We often, as Catholics, we promote the family life and we exonerate the domestic church, father, mother, and child. For us to really do that, we must be able to look at the at heaven and say, okay, we have God the Father. We have God the Son. No family can be complete without a mother, a queen mother. Mary, the queen mother who gave birth to Jesus, a singular grace given to her and to her alone. And Jesus being God, provides Mary with another singular grace amongst many. But that singular grace is he speeds up time, per se. For we all profess, and even sacred scripture speaks of a time at the end of the age when all the souls and the bodies of individuals will be united again at the resurrection of the dead where the soul, where the bodies of individuals will come back, join with their souls. And then as scripture said in Jesus' little uh, story about the, sh the lambs and the goats, some go off to eternal glory and others go off to not eternal glory. But Jesus, because he is God, because he has a mother, because the family is not complete without father, mother, and child. Jesus gave to Mary that grace where her body did not have to decompose on earth. He brought her to heaven as we will all one day pray God if we die in a state of grace be brought to heaven. For as we know, when we die, our souls go to the particular judgment. And at the end of time, when we have the general judgment, body and soul united, let us say we are lucky enough at the general judgment, God says, welcome good and faithful servants. 
When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was ill or in prison, you came to visit me. When I was hungry, you fed me. And we, along with others, ride off with him into eternal glory. How do we get there? With body and soul united as he is in heaven, as his mother is in heaven now. It's not far-fetched to believe that God could not grant to his mother the grace, the gift of being in heaven now as we will pray God be there later as he is currently now. That's why for so many generations, Catholics held this belief. It just made good sense because they looked at it from a very real perspective. What child who dearly loves his mother, and there's a special bond I find that develops between boys and moms, you see that so commonly, you don't see it now as much because uh, of sports, the way that they're filmed. But I remember growing up when they would show the sideline of the sporting events and the professional athlete, what did they always say? Hi, mom. There's that relationship that develops. So if it develops on earth in our ramification, that we would sit there and say, boy, if I was a child, and if I had the ability to do something for my mom, I would. Then why not God? Why not God, who has that ability, grant the same gift to his mother? that we, if we had that ability, would do this likewise. So it wasn't until 1950 where the Pope gathers the bishops of the world and says, you know, this is something we've always believed. We've always held this. As far back as we can go, we've always professed this. But we've never officially declared it. Do your people, and do you, my brother bishops, want me to declare this as an infallible teaching, free of all error, that this is something we always believe? And the reports came back unanimously. Yes, yes, Holy Father, our people believe this. They've always believed this. This is how they grew up believing this. So the Pope said, therefore, since this is a, a belief that we all as Catholics hold, I will declare this infallible teaching, infallible being free from error teaching. And therefore today we celebrate that. So let us thank God for the gift of his mother Mary. Let us thank him that at the cross, he went another step further by saying to us through John, son, daughter, behold your mother. And he said to Mary, for us, woman, behold your son or daughter, behold your children. And our blessed lady in heaven, our mother in heaven looks out for us, intercedes for us, ask her son, son, take care of them. And when we pray and ask Mary to help us, we say, Mary, mother of God, pray for us. Pray that what we ask for will benefit us spiritually Pray what we ask for for our loved ones will benefit them spiritually. Lead us always into a deeper relationship with your son. Now, what mother would not respond to that? So, I know it's a lot to 
offer you this morning on such a, a topic, but please, please, never, never shy away when people ask you questions about Mary. Think of it from a very practical, real standpoint. As much as we love our mothers, our Heavenly Son, Jesus, loves His and wants us to love her as well. May Almighty God be with you. May He bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us stand for our profession of faith, our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and sin, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. We pray for our Holy Father, for our Archbishop, for all priests, religious brothers, sisters, permanent deacons, and seminarians. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way to study and those who care for them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the needs of our brothers and sisters who will watch this Mass on video. And for the needs of you here present in our church today, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of the soul of Christine Ray, for whom this Mass is being offered this morning. We pray to the Lord. Offering all our prayers to the Father. On this day in honor of Mary, let us conclude with that most beautiful prayer to her. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifices in your hands. For the praise and glory in his name. For our good and the good of all this holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of your love constantly long for you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your churches to come into perfection and a shine of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts of grace by giving out the spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, in giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the child's, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that the taking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our God. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. To so await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus 
Christ. Our redeeming the power and the glory of the world is now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant the Lord that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended. Go in peace. Amen. A prayer to Saint Michael. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us from God. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of hell. May God redeem him among the right and the evil prince of the heavenly hosts. By the divine power, for us in hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of our souls. Amen. Divine praise and protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, your God and your name. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the soul. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary, the soul. Blessed be our holy and happy conception. Blessed be our Lord and Son. Blessed be the name of Mary, the Lord and Son. Blessed be the angels of the most gracious house. Blessed be God and his angels and his saints. 